right, folks, welcome to another episode, winter edition, hopefully. We are projected to get about 8 to 12 inches of snow up here in these Utah mountains, and so I thought, you know, let's go see what we can get into. starting to get in the snow. It's starting to stick. About another 500 feet up, we'll be in it. We're at about 8,600 now, 9,000. We'll be uh, driving in a winter wonderland. Pretty excited about the spot I got picked out too. Just hope it doesn't snow too much. Hope these roads don't get too slick. Hope it's a nice fluffy snow with lots of traction. That way I can get back out of here without too much of a headache. Do have a couple of exit routes to choose from. This one is probably the steepest so I do have a better route on the other side so I've been thinking through this process for a while now because I've been looking forward to a little bit of snow Just like that, fall and then boom. Welcome to winter time. It's a magical wonderland up here.
well, we've made it to camp. Another long day. Just couldn't stop driving in the snow. And I was a little bit worried. I was worried that it was coming down so hard that I was going to wake up to like three feet. It was that bad. So, uh, kind of played around until it finally slowed and now it's just kind of basically stopped. Just a few flurries now. We're up to probably six inches or so. So, as long as it doesn't get too carried away overnight, we should be able to get out of here tomorrow. But it's time to eat some dinner. And it is late. But doing something a little different tonight. So we've got good old Kraft mac and cheese and some homemade brisket. Remember a while back we did a brisket mac? That's what I'm making tonight. But I'm doing it in a new little stove system here. Just branching out, trying some different stuff. I like how small this guy right here is, especially when I'm just traveling by myself. So we're going to give this MSR a little, little trial run tonight and uh, see how it does for us. I am starving though. Let's get cooking. Definitely have more than I need. Just gonna cube this up a little bit. And if you've never had smoked brisket, I'm gonna tell y'all, it's amazing. You can see how tender this one was. I'm just pressing through it. That's so good. I ought to do it. Doesn't look like much. This is a big pan. So they actually include a lid with a strainer, so let's give that a try. I don't have any butter, but I have this. And it's butter flavored. Now for the cheese packet. That will do. Kind of nothing more comforting than mac and cheese. Just throw a little brisket in there. Get him on. Mm. <laughs> uh, and here comes the snow. Burr. Good morning. Well, we got a little bit more snow last night. Check it out.
you want the definition of peace. Climbed to 10,300 feet just before the first snowstorm of the year. And just wait. This is peaceful. Glad I put that on there. Yet another beauty of the propane fire. Instant heat. I'm not hunting wood with frozen fingers. I know, it's not nostalgic. It's functional.
right, it's time to fire up our secret weapon. Power it up. And tonight, we're powering it off of the Blue Eddy. I opted not to bring my big home-built battery system just to see how the Blue Eddy does in the cold weather. So we'll see what happens. It's getting cold though. Come on, little guy. You can do it. Prime in the pump. Good morning folks. Another chilly night last night. Even got just a dusting of snow. Stayed nice and toasty in here, but I will say, I had a little bit of a scare. Come to find out, I had set it on a fairly deep spot of snow, and overnight it had melted one end of its footprint and was sitting in a 45 degree angle, and so the fuel pickup couldn't pick up the fuel that was on the other side of the tank. So easy fix we'll definitely get the shovel out and dig that thing down to bare ground next go around but still decent night's sleep and i'm ready on the trail first coffee and maybe a little breakfast <laughs> Not the greatest chair for this. There. Don't try this at home.
Yeah. Got some fried, bacon fried eggs. Some bacon fried bacon. Some strawberry yogurt. Blueberries. Smoked chipotle Tabasco. Oh. <laughs> well, I've said it before. There's nothing more peaceful than being out here in the snow. It just soaks up all that sound. Talk about solitude. All right. I'm going to pound this. And we're going to get on the trail. Let's we'll see what we can get into. Mm. We came into this spot last night it was traction city i was like man these mickey thompson's are all right and by the way they've been probably one of our favorite tires so far but this morning with just a little bit of melt it's slick man it's just gorgeous absolutely gorgeous Well, this was a fun little side trip. Not much in the way of epic camps or anything like that. Just a beautiful little trail with some crazy rock formations. Honestly, if it wasn't for the snow, it'd probably be pretty bleak because there was a fire that came through here in the not too distant past. But still, today, she's cloaked in a glorious veil of snowy goodness.
explored a little bit further north, and while I haven't gained hardly any altitude, the snow cover is just next level. I think there's probably 18 inches, maybe two feet of snow. I'm currently on a BLM road, or a county road. It's actually been plowed. If it hadn't been plowed, I would not be doing this. That just would be impossible, so. I'm trying to track a little further west now and see if we get a reprieve from the snow. And if my plan works out, I might be camping near a hot spring tonight, or at least stopping by to take a look at it. So, let's see if this works out. Otherwise, got some backtrack. So I just had to stop for a second because this is just like a whole other world. I mean, generally this would just be grassland, not covered in this much snow. And there's trails that run out that way, but and even one right there. <laughs> there's so much snow here, though, it's just shut all that down. Now, granted, I could give it a try, but I mean, looking at 18 inches right here and then if there's a drift out there that would be fun i would have expected this up in the mountains but not not down here at 5,000 feet which i guess technically is the mountains for some people but not for utah this is low country desert I'm gonna keep heading west i guess see if we can't find uh some open trails <laughs> Well, that didn't work out. Apparently, what's underneath this snow turned into soup for this excavator who was clearing my path, and they had to quit. This is, this is gnarly. Look at this stuff. It's about three feet deep down there. Wow. He went a little bit further and buried it, and that was it. So, <laughs> time to backtrack. Well, it's getting interesting now. For the most part, these roads have been froze solid. But we've dropped about 500 feet in altitude, and this must have had some sun on it today. So I just, I can't stop. I just can't, can't even stop at this point. Just roll through it. Thankfully it's probably only about another quarter mile to where I'm hoping to camp. But uh, yeah, this is not ideal trail conditions. This is not something that I had hoped for. And if I'd known it was this bad, I might have picked another route, but we're committed at this point. Well, it looks like we might have this all to ourselves. Wow. It's wild that this just comes up out of the ground just random places and the right temperature that you can just like hang out in it.
Oh man. <laughs> Bath time. Ducks were hanging out here, scared the poop out of me. Now that's the place to hang out. Well, I think it's time for a quick little dip. Warm up just a bit. Especially since I've got it all to myself here tonight. <laughs> Crazy spot. Camp set up over there. One thing I forgot to bring was a towel. And I have a bathing suit, but that's no good if it's just freezing cold. So I lit the diesel heater. So my tent is currently turning into a sweat lodge. So it'll be nice and toasty as I make my run across here. But in the meantime, I want to soak right here. And I brought the campfire over. Got this whole place to myself. You know. Just going to make myself comfortable, if you know what I mean. If you've never sat in a hot spring, you're missing out on one of life's essential experiences. What a rewarding end to a long drive through questionable roads and routes. But we're here. I'm going to enjoy this. Probably just something quick and easy for dinner. Back on the trail in the morning. All right, well, good morning, folks. We're picking up where we left off at these magnificent hot springs. Had a nice, long, probably <laughs> hour and a half, two hour soak last night. Fantastic. Now you can control these pools by letting in hot or cold water and get your temperature just right, but I had that one piping hot, that one kind of lukewarm. So I would just bounce back and forth, 15 minutes over there, 15 minutes over there. <laughs> now I could certainly stay here forever but the roads are frozen it's time to get out of here before it becomes a sloppy mess but it doesn't look like we're gonna have any sun today so should be in decent traveling shape all day long but already packed up I didn't film any of that no coffee b-roll sorry for you coffee aficionados I'm sure those who dislike coffee are pleased just want to get a good start we got a lot to cover I don't know how far I'm going to make it, but i got an ambitious loop that I'm trying to get in. And I've only got like three or four more days to finish this. So, <laughs> got to stop with the distractions and just roll. All right, 
last kid on the road and see what we can find. Well, woke up to a beautiful sunrise, expecting to get some sunshine today, not the case. Heavy fogs rolled in, visibility's about 300 yards, that's all right. At least the ground's frozen. We're on top of this stuff now. So I'm gonna head out, look at a couple more cool things. I don't know what visibility's gonna do to us today, but we'll see what happens. At least we're on the road. I don't think you guys have been on this trail in a while. So if you were curious as to why there are hot springs in this area, generally you're going to find volcanic activity. And this is the remains of a cinder cone of some kind. But just look at the way that stuff would ease up out of the ground, cool, and then flake off and roll down the hill. It's wild. So crazy. So I'm driving along this trail that kind of goes around this thing, looking up at the volcanic rock, and there's steam coming out of it. There's steam right there. I'll get a long range lens and show you, but you can kind of see there's vegetation and stuff growing right there. So there's a hot spring that's trickling its way up and out of that. Wow. Makes you think. Well, I was hoping to take this trail link up with some mining activity I was seeing on the map, but came to this spot here thinking it was just another salt flat. And uh, it's ice. So, yeah, it's probably fine, but. If I get out in the middle of this, find a thin spot, 
I am hosed. I am done. Done, done, done. So, find a way around this. I was easing out on here. <laughs> Just a few yards and I could hear. That's not salt flat. That's ice. No idea how deep it is. But we're not going to find out the hard way. And end up an Instagram meme. Well, I've exhausted two attempts to try and get around this. I've even pulled out maybe 20 yards onto it, and it didn't offer to pop or crack. I sincerely think that the water is froze solid. I just don't know how soft the mud might be under it at some point in there. Like I said, if I was to fall through, it would be game ending. Now, I could back up and give it just a fast shot so that if it does decide to start to fail I can be moving to the next piece of ice but I think what I'm gonna do is actually I'm just gonna skirt it I'm just gonna kind of put my right tire just on the edge of the sage here and I'm just gonna skirt it nice and slow that way if something does fall through I know it's not gonna be crazy deep or anything like that otherwise I've just got to burn a crap ton of fuel and go backwards I'm just going to ease out, see if I hear any weird sounds, and then uh, maybe we can get around this little, this little spot. Oh, part of the adventure, I guess. It just sucks being solo, because you know you're on your own. So, yeah, I'm just going to ease out here and see, see if this works for us. I don't recommend anybody do that. I really don't. Not as a solo. It didn't crack. The ice never once gave a hint that it was gonna be a problem, so. I think the temperature is what saved us this go around, but this route is going to be a nightmare when everything starts to thaw. I would stay out of Western Utah for probably a month or two whenever this starts to go. Hopefully, that was our only obstacle. I'm seeing tire tracks now, so I think this side is clear. Were you holding your breath on that one? <laughs> and by the way, if I had any inkling that that was going to be deep, that that was going to be like fall through the ice, I would have never done that. I walked it, I could see the dirt, you know, three, four inches below the ice. So again, I'm not advocating anybody do that, but it would have been great YouTube material had I fell through. I would have been calling one of those recovery channels, I guess. <laughs> uh, don't do that. Wish I know you. You were young. Riding three sheets to the sun. Did you dream of? Did you want from the life set before? Wish I know you. You were strong. Did you run like the devil to the dawn? Were you a sailor? Did you catch the wind? Could 
Then the sea, sky, and anchors under them. These are questions I'm asking you. Cause I don't know you half as well as I think I do. Time runs over, life's begun. Will you return to who you were? sunset we've got these this fog bank down in the valley and it's only about maybe 50 100 feet tall and it's just blanketed the valley made for a spectacular sunset I've never seen anything from this perspective I mean we're not that high that's wild just like a thin little layer of fog down in there it's so cool all right, well, I'm starving. Not really cooked a big dinner yet on this run, so tonight we're gonna remedy that. And if you've been on this channel before, you can probably guess what we're having. Let's get cooking. Garlic powder and paprika always gives it a good flavor. Ooh. 
good try. And now, you go for a rest, little guy. Keep all that warm. Alright, let's see what we got. <laughs> yes. You go there. Mmm, look at that nice char. Yeah. That's the best. And they're self steamed too. The butter went up in there and just softened them. Softened them right up. And then there were potatoes. Done and done. Let's eat. While we're here, let's just see how we did. Oh, did you see how smooth that cut? Oh, yeah. Oh, so perfect. All right. Man. Cooking at camp isn't that hard. I like to keep it simple and just do a meat and some veggies. That's it, super simple. And it doesn't have to be steak. You can do chicken or pork or, I've even got some pre-seasoned stuff that I picked up so I don't have to worry about marinating. So try it, it's easy and it's delicious. And when it's cold like this, you need all the calories you can get. Mm. All right, well, good morning, folks. It's a glorious day here in western Utah. Trying to get into the desert to find some warmer temps and maybe less snow. No such luck, but it's absolutely beautiful. And not quite as cold as it would be up in the mountains. So I'm enjoying the heck out of it. This morning, it is time. It is time to make a very special breakfast. You've seen this once before on the channel. This is my first time making it myself, though. So anything could happen. This is what I look forward to when I go to bed at night. All right, on to another cold weather secret weapon. And for this, we're issuing an old fashioned SOS. Oh, and I don't mean a Morse code distress signal. Today, SOS is code for something else. Mm, look at that. <laughs> we're just gonna use half today though. Save that for tomorrow. So this one goes out to my mom. She's the one that put me onto this. She's made this on special occasions while I was growing up. And if you don't know what this is called, it's called Dead on the Shingle. This was a fast and easy meal that the military used back in the World War II and Korean War era, from my understanding, maybe even longer before that. It's also been used with hamburger meat, but the corned beef is where it's at. We're just gonna crispify this a little bit and then get our gravy going. Now, fair warning, this is my first time making this and I'm only working from memory on this recipe. I know gravy making can be as sacred as some religions to many people, so please don't take offense to my process here. But feel free to share your own tips in the comments below because even my wife Sarah cringed while watching me edit this part. But you know what? It still thickened up nicely and smelled just like those childhood memories. The real question though, will it taste like a pleasant memory from the past? or something more akin to its acronym. I did some research and found that SOS first made its official appearance in a 1910 recipe book for army cooks. The goal in those days was something that was filling, but also made with shelf-stable ingredients that could withstand long encampments in the field. So things like evaporated milk, lard, dried chipped beef, and flour were perfect for this meal. This savory mixture was then served on toast, or a shingle, as it was so lovingly named by the soldiers. And while the official name may be a turnoff or downright offense to some, this breakfast has a special place in my heart because of the memories and people surrounding it. Not to mention the fact, when done right, it is very delicious. Oh, 
that off with a little bit of pepper. And that's how you make a machine. <sighs> mm. Good memories in this one. Thank you, Mama, for putting me on this one. Nailed it. Nailed it. Mm. Can't watch me do this. I'm gonna eat and then we'll get on trail. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, we are on the trail again, headed north. But first I had to clear off a bunch of blockage from all the ice and mud buildup. I'd hope that it'd warm up enough today to knock some of that stuff off because if you're ever traveling in conditions like this, it'll build up so bad that when you go to turn, you can't turn. Your wheels are gonna be locked either straight or mostly straight. So it's not a bad idea to check that from time to time if you're traveling some nasty roads Generally, just in snow, no big deal, but this muddy, slushy, icy mixture that we're running on top of, it can accumulate pretty quick. And by the way, that breakfast, maybe it's not so much the flavor or the contents, but sometimes when you have a meal or you have special memories tied to them, and with me, it was my papa. You know, that's kind of where it came from. He was in the Korean War, um, fought, not just on the front lines, he was in an outpost. And, uh, you know, he came back telling the stories of that and just the time spent with him and funny enough, just the connection of shit on a shingle, you wouldn't think would be, you know, emotional tie, but it is. I think it's interesting that we as humans associate smells and food and stuff to times and places with people that we love. But, uh, yeah. It's nice to spend a minute this morning and think about that. As we've often discovered along our travels, sometimes the most interesting part about the trail we're on is the history of the people who first forged it. Those who cut a path through the wilderness and linked small patches of new settlements back to established towns and cities as America expanded westward. Today, I find myself traveling along just such a route called the Central Overland Trail, which was established in 1855 by Howard Egan, who began driving cattle between Salt Lake and California. Wonder how deep that is. By the way. It's starting out. So the cool part, no pun intended, about traveling in this weather is the fact that you get to see any geothermal activity. And I'm driving along and there's steam coming up off the horizon over there. So sure enough, more hot springs over there. Can you use them? I don't know. Looking on the map, it shows that they're on military land, um, but visually from the road, I don't know. There's a bunch of signs over there right on the edge, but somebody's bermed off the road driving out there, so I'm just, I'm not gonna push my luck. Moving on, but wow, this place is cool. This new trail saved 280 miles over the old California Trail and it was soon being used by settlers, stagecoaches, and eventually some of the most iconic Western legends in U.S. history. 
the intrepid riders of the Pony Express. Those boys used to ride this route to deliver the mail. Such a crazy story. And here, Old Silver is just casually moping along <laughs> this path. Now we can touch a button and send an email in a matter of seconds. It's just wild. Today, you can still see remnants of this ingenious express mail system spanning roughly 1,900 miles from Missouri to California with outposts spread 5 to 25 miles apart along its length. This allowed fresh horse swaps for the tireless riders who rode at breakneck speeds for up to 100 miles in a single day. Now I've got to confess, the little boy inside me was giddy at having stumbled across this Pony Express route because I spent many evenings in the early 90s watching a show called The Young Riders. It definitely brought back some wistful childhood desire to live back in that time and been a part of such an incredible endeavor. It gives me chills to think that I was finally riding along the very stretch of trail I had dreamed about as a kid in my own trusty steed named Silver. Although I was about 160 years late to the party, it was still a pretty special moment for that 10 year old part of me. Now, if I could just find some wild Mustangs, this part of my Wild West fantasy would be complete. Sadly, the Pony Express came to a quick end when 18 months after the delivery of their first saddlebag of mail, a new technology sealed their fate when the transcontinental telegram system was completed, linking the East Coast to the West Coast far faster than anyone horseback could ever ride. As you can imagine, there's a lot more to this story of pure grit and determination by a collection of young boys mounted on ponies than I have time to tell here. But if you ever get the chance to retrace their hoof prints in Western Utah, I bet you too will find yourself lost in imagination of what it would have been like back then. How's it going? Also, what you got there, girl? What you got there? You got you a new baby? I hear it. Kind of a rough time of the year to be dropping a fresh calf, but they're more hardy than what you think, too. I'm gonna go ahead and move away, though. She was getting a little nervous. Let her get back to licking it and cleaning it up. What a great day if you're going to be born during this time of year. <laughs> nice sunny day to be born. Well, and just like that, the snow was gone. The roads are dry. I think this mountain range must kick it off of this little town. This is a cool little spot. There's some modern houses, but for the most part, there are some old log cabins, old log houses in here. Some of them that are being lived in, some of them that are going by the wayside, but that's a cool little town. This was the expected weather. This was the expected terrain. So maybe we're getting into a little more drier situation. We'll see. So I actually turn it around. There's a little BLM road shoots off towards the mountain here and it is getting kind of late in the evening so probably time to start hunting camp let's run up in here real quick and see what our options are downright balmy now <laughs> that that's a quick change and those mountains are so pretty you can literally see the snow line it just changes right there and that's not an altitude change that's just geographical change 
That's crazy. That looks like a decent camping spot too, but that's enticing. Well, that might be the end of the road. Yeah, it's starting to get a little sketchy. These drifts. If I knew what was under here, I might try it, but I don't. I will be back though. That looks like a cool trail. All kinds of mining stuff too. There's like some structures out there. One of those things by myself. I'm gonna play it safe. Because I definitely don't want to get sideways up in here. With nothing to winch off of either, really. I think we'll play it safe and go back to that camp spot right down the hill here. Man, look at that. What a spectacular evening. Oh man. I needed a camera in every direction. Just so much going on with the snow blowing over this peak behind me. And then there were just traces of sunlight dancing all across the valley and hitting the mountains and turning pink. And it was a good balance of trying to film a few things but also just trying to soak it up too because these are the moments that we pursue these views these experiences uh, it's just amazing now while I am still <laughs> decently full from that massive breakfast it is time to eat some dinner because I know I'll be hungry again in a minute so I'm just trying to decide what to make I'm gonna dig in here and see what I got I really can't gush enough about this setup. I've been so pleased with its functionality, portability, to be able to cook and stay warm while you're out here doing this. Now in the summertime, yeah, not so much. But for wintertime camping, it's been awesome. Play nice. Have to hurry this up. Definitely want to use these guys up before they go bad. So 
hope that wind doesn't get up on us. That's the main thing. That will do. morning what a beautiful beautiful morning again just like last night I couldn't point the camera <laughs> in a bad direction I just felt like I didn't have enough cameras but I think this one's gonna go on the list of epic camps in my opinion well keeping it simple this morning I'm just gonna do a quick little breakfast so I've got some yogurt blueberries and sausage Sarah always texts me in the middle of my talking heads, but that's okay. We'll see what she's doing. Like I was saying, sausage from last night for a little protein. A little pep in your step, a little sodium in your soul, and then uh, we're going to hit the road. I'm mostly packed down already, so yeah. I want to make some distance today. Well, I want to explore today. Distance can be deceiving. I'd rather explore 20 miles that's interesting than 200 miles that's just on and on and on of just trail work so let's get going these little boxes these little front runner organizers from a total truck up in alaska thanks craig have been awesome for keeping things organized and if i want to put something else in the store, I can just pull the whole thing out. 
much better than what we had sliding around there before. And all of our kitchen stuff is in our uh, Amazon store, lso.link forward slash Amazon. Water sources in the desert are few and far between, which means they're a hot spot for wildlife activity, Native American rock art, and traces of the more recent westbound settlers. So when I saw this one pop up on the map, I decided to have a closer look. Apparently there's a spring up in here. You can hear babbling up in the brush. Some watercress growing in it too. Some healthy water. Piece of pottery. That's from a big jug too. Another piece, same part. <laughs> what would be the odds, right? I don't know if this shows up well on camera, but you can see that this pocket has been dug out this way and this way. And these stones here, I think, were a small fireplace. So either someone lived here or this was just a more sheltered camp, maybe a lean-to or a dugout. What a great spot. Another small piece. So someone lived here for a bit. So on this trip, while I've not been filming, I've been listening to audiobooks and I've been stuck on the Lonesome Dove series. And don't let the TV series fool you. That is a brutal book. That is not a family listen. But wow, when you hear what life was like, at least in story form, in the Wild West, it's a lot less romantic and a lot more frightful and gruesome and hard. And so it's interesting listening to that and being in that mindset and then walking through some of these areas like they would describe in the book. You're like looking over your shoulder, who's, <laughs> who's hiding behind the next bush? Crazy, crazy that now I, as just a solo adventurer, can come out here in almost complete safety without a thought and just walk about and explore this without the risk that came with life in the West. And just to know that in, you know, just a few hours, I can be home if I want to. And even if I broke down, it's not that hard to get help out here. So things have they have changed in a really short amount of time when you look at the course of history our life right now is better than anyone has ever had it and it's a good reminder it's a good reminder to try and be cognizant of that and thankful that we have these opportunities that we have
found our first drift. Probably can power through it. It's actually not a drift, it's just a wash. I just don't know where the trail is now. Yeah, so it looks like the trail is actually free. And some split in the grass there. That's just a dry wash, so I'm going to back out and see where it went. I'm going to get around that, and I can probably scooch this way. I don't know, maybe, maybe it'll work. At least I don't have a trailer behind me. This is one of those trips where not having a trailer makes a huge difference. I don't know, just enough hope up there. This really puts me in mind of Echo Canyon over in Death Valley. Very similar geology. See the little tube-like caves there? They're everywhere. <laughs> so pretty. Here, on the border of Nevada and Utah, there are no shortages of trails to choose from. The challenge in this expedition has been finding areas without too much snow and passable routes for a solo rig. While this trail was proving to be a piece of cake for silver, it was so old and hardly used that it was getting very difficult to find the overgrown route in the snow. Thankfully, I could just make out the slight hints of a two-track and the dry wash, and it also helped to have my navigation app at full zoom to keep me on course. These are my favorite types of trails because you know you're on a track that very few people have ever seen. So remember when I said that trail conditions can greatly affect your mile per gallon average? Well, I reset this while I started fighting the snow and looking for it's at. Hopefully you can see that, but it's 3.2. Something to think about. Well, we made it through the wash. And now we're in the junipers where it has drifted pretty good. You see that? I'm just going to set the camera up and try to make my way up the trail here, see what happens. Thankfully, it's just kind of the perfect slushiness that I'm able to compact the top, get a nice track on it. So this is easy to travel. This is good stuff. As I unceremoniously crossed the state line into Nevada, which, by the way, I guess it's not in their budget for a welcome sign way out here, I spotted something out of the corner of my eye and scrambled to get my long-range lens set up. But this badger had no interest in welcoming me either. But he did inadvertently do me a favor because my camera was ready for what was over the next rise. Finally, I had spotted some wild mustangs and fulfilled yet another childhood dream. This small group, though, wanted nothing to do with Silver, who had intruded on their range, and they immediately ran a couple miles away before stopping. Thankfully, I was able to spot a more friendly group with a foal just a few miles down the trail, who were keeping company with an unexpected desert guest, a mature bald eagle. Now folks, I'm not sure if you can get a more American experience than this.
It's been a hard fought day here. Just the snow does not want to stop. I'm trying to get down into the desert a little bit further right now to hopefully maybe camp out of the snow. We're getting there, but it's a slog. Tried a couple of other trails that I, I didn't film just because I wanted to make camp before dark. And um, same scenario, two feet of snow in places. So just having to, having to fight to get to a good spot right now. really isn't a situation that I prefer, but it is what it is. It's my fault for not picking something sooner. Just wanting to get out of the worst of the snow. Looks like we're just gonna have to bite the bullet. So right now I'm headed into these hills. Just want to find something. A little bit of shelter. We're driving through herds of wild mustangs and they are the most skittish animal I've ever seen. As soon as I crest the hill, they're gone. I was able to get closer to the antelope today than to the mustangs. I'm starving. I've got something special planned for supper tonight. It should be fairly quick and easy. So uh, you may have to give me a little grace on the fact it's not super sexy B-roll. I may just kind of give you the steps and show you what I'm doing. But, uh, I'm hungry. Yeah, Silver. Ride with these Mustangs. Yeah. She wants to run with them. Come on, Silver. Oh, well. Not ideal, but not bad. It's not completely dark yet. This will work for tonight. And... We're on like a main highway for the Mustang, so could be could be interesting in the morning. So let's get some food in us. I'm starving. All right, not gonna get too fancy the film in the night, but I am gonna show you what I'm doing. I've got hot sausage, and I've got queso, and then I've got all these things to spice this and this up to make just a supercharged nacho dip or soupy tacos as my family calls it. I got hatch green chilies, I got diced tomatoes and more green chilies, chipotles and roasted garlic, and I'm gonna chop this onion up as well. So, let's get it in us. All right, let's start with getting our onion sauteed. I'm gonna do a little generous dollop of garlic. Generous dollop of chipotle. Our green chilies, maybe half the can or however much you like. All right, just want to soften up those onions first. So we're gonna pour in our rotel now because I just need some moisture in there to help with this not sticking. Now this is far too much for me, but this would probably be good for a family of three or four. So I'm going to cut this down whenever I get to the next step. Alright, I'm going to throw this in another pot for now. Right, and now we're going to cook our sausage. Alright, now we've got the sausage cooked up. And now, we cheese it. I'm just going to put it all in. Now you could totally use real cheese, but when I started walking to the grocery store looking at stuff for this idea and started adding up the price, one of those big jars was just as expensive. So I instead grabbed one of the jars just to make this easy. And no, I won't eat all this, but I'll put it back in the jar and it'll be a tasty lunch. We're almost there. This, ah, oh, this smells so good. All right, I think we're done here. I've been heating this guy up just for a little presentation purposes. And what would it be without just a little bit of garnish just to 
Make it look pretty. A little dried cilantro. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Ah, I'm starving. So hungry. I need this though. Got me some Don Julio's. Best tortilla chips in my opinion. Got my queso bucket. Let's see what the verdict is. You don't have to go camping to make this. And I got the ratios right too. Oh yeah. That's gonna keep me warm tonight. Mmm. Mmm. Even with filming, I don't think it took but maybe 25 minutes to make this. So if you do the shortcuts like I did, maybe forego the onions, this is probably a 10 minute deal. Alright, well good early morning folks. Did a little bit of research last night and we've got high wind warning, a wind chill warning of up to negative 20 and two to four inches of snow on the way. So I think it's time to pull the plug on this adventure. We've been punching snow long enough. I'm gonna go home. Honestly, I just miss the girls. Miss my new baby. Miss my Caroline, so I'm gonna pack it up and head out. Now before you rush off to the next video, this show isn't over, folks. Little did I know at this moment in the wee morning hours that the Nevada desert had one more treat to share with us before we said happy trails. Blocking plate. Look at that guy. These are available in our store. LSO.link forward slash inflate. Whew! The wind has started. And that's the best part. <laughs> the best part about the auto inflator is you can like, I'm gonna go sit in the truck a minute. It doesn't take long though, it's pretty quick. With dual ARB doing his job back here. Uh, it's been a good trip. It's been a really good trip. I needed this, but it's time. It's time to get back to the girls. Got a lot of garage stuff I wanna share with you guys. A lot of product stuff. I wanna talk a lot about the GX versus the 4Runner. I wanna talk about the 4Runner. I mean, we're almost 200,000 miles and just give you a review, but. It's loud in here. I probably should be talking right now. Oh, look how pretty that is back there. I could just keep going. This is some pretty filming weather right here. After airing up and filming what I thought was a solid parting shot for this expedition, I caught some movement out of the corner of my eye and to my surprise saw an entire herd of wild mustangs matching pace alongside Silver. Today, most legends of the Wild West can only be found in dusty history books, fanciful fictions, and old western movies. But in this moment, I got a glimpse back in time as these magnificent animals thundered across the desert. While it may be a ghost of its former self, 
the Wild West lives on, and its legacy still pulses through the veins of these horses, whose lineage traces all the way back to the Spanish conquistadors who came here to conquer these lands. After over 500 years since they first rode into these lands, much of the West has indeed been settled, civilized, and tamed. But when you look into the eyes of a wild Mustang, you realize that there are still some places where the wildness lives on. <laughs> oh, what a treat. What a treat. What a nice punctuation to the end. Hi-ho, Silver, riding with the Mustangs. Uh. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this adventure. Remember, stay curious, leave it better than you found it. And also, if, if you love what we do, if you find yourself coming back to this channel more often than not, please consider supporting us. We're viewer supported over on Patreon, so just go to lso.link forward slash support and help us continue this adventure, help us to expand this adventure. We appreciate you guys. Thank you patrons for everything that you do. We seriously would not be here. We would not be doing this if it wasn't for you. So from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for your continued support. All right guys, time to drive. We'll see you. Woo! That's a wrap, baby! Woo